Hey everybody, hope you're doing great today. This is Paul from Aquariums and Gardens. And in today's video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my Lake Tanganyikan 55 gallon aquarium, which you see right here behind me. So I had this tank set up for a while and it's pretty well established. It's got a number of different Lake Tanganyikan fish. It's got live plants. So in addition to talking about the plants and fish I have in there, I'm also going to talk about the equipment I have in this tank what I use to filter the tank, as well as the heater, the lighting, and whatnot. So let's take a look. So this is a 55 gallon aquarium set up for Lake Tanganyika fish. I've got new Lamprolucus lelupi, some Julidochromus. Those are the yellow and black stripe there, as well as some Cyprochromus, which are kind of these sardine looking guys over here. Plant-wise, I have java fern, as well as a number of different anubias. So you can see some of the anubias, as well as the java fern has been glued to the dragonstone. The sand I'm using is actually black blasting sand that I've purchased from Tractor Supply. And the background there is a, that's an artificial background, it's not real but it's from Universal Rocks. Using a sponge filter with air pump. And I also have an internal mechanical filter right here. So the filter is a Fluval U4 in-tank filter. The heater I'm using is an Eheim heater. So one mistake I did do when I originally bought these fish over here, I got these, I got about five of these fish here, the Cyprochromus, and then I ended up picking up three more later from a local pet store. So the five I purchased, I purchased from a local breeder, and then I purchased a couple more from the fish store, and those turned out to be a different species of Cyprochromus. So I did not realize at the time you're not supposed to mix them. I did mix them, unfortunately. Uh, this one male here did breed with a female who I believe was a similar species, similar subspecies as he is, but the five for those parents never survived to adulthood, unfortunately. So I am working on a fish room in the basement, and once that's set up, I'm gonna transfer this purple Cyprochromus down into a basement tank, and then I will reach out to that local fish breeder to see if he has any more of the similar species here, which I can add, add to this. I did lose a few of these fish, I'm not sure why. So I did lose a couple, I originally had eight, and then lost three in the process. So this purple male does boss around the other male, so he's hiding right now. And I do have these Lelupis here. I originally started out with five of them. One of them passed away. I actually think he had a disability. I think his eye was, one of his eyes was damaged. So he was bullied by some of the other fish and ended up, what I'm guessing, is crashing into one of the rocks because he couldn't see properly and that, that killed him. But interestingly enough, some of the loopies in here paired off and then bred. So I actually had one fish survive. He's hiding here somewhere. So he's a product of what, one of the loopies. I don't know which one, which two are the parents. But I was kind of surprised when I saw the little fish swimming around. Initially I thought it was a Cyprochromus because it had a similar color. But as that fish aged, then you could see it was clearly a Lelupi fish. So the Julidochromus I have, I have four. It appears to be at least two males and two females. And this, there's a male in there, you can kind of see in the cave. And the two females here with the Julidochromus. The males are generally smaller than the females. And they have been breeding, but unfortunately none of their fish survive. A lot of these fish in here are predators. So I don't have the setup yet where I could transfer them to a tank and raise them up. Here's the baby Lelupi. You can clearly see he's a Lelupi. So he's one of, the, one of the only fish who's been born in this tank and survived to this size. So the Chulodochromos, they have a beautiful fins, beautiful color, beautiful pattern on their bodies. Great overall fish, fun to watch. The Lulupis too, they're also fun to watch. 
they kind of in, engage in interesting mating behavior. The males will kind of do this dance, kind of this hyper dance where they move very quickly and stop and then move quickly again. So for the lighting, I have a Heiger light here that, that does well enough for the plants. So I originally started off with a Phoenix Stingray, which was a nice light. The one thing I did not like about it, it was all, only on or off. And in which case, when it would turn on full blast, it would stress out the fish because the light turning on all of a sudden at full, full blast freaked them out. So with this Heiger, the one thing I like about it, probably the best thing I like about it, in addition to being bright, is it's actually got a timer on it. So with this Heiger light, you can actually set the timer to come on and not only does it come on, it actually comes on in phases. So it can start out lower level and then increase in intensity. And once it reaches its peak, it actually can then turn down and slowly turn down until it turns off. It does have a night mode, a moon mode, which is nice. But it's doing pretty well for the plants. I do have some algae issues here on the plants, as you can see. So I really don't have any fish right now that take care of that. Most of these fish here are They'll eat the flake and the pellet food that I put in. So I do have some snails I'm quarantining in the basement that they should be ready here soon. And I'm hoping they'll start cleaning up these plants. I'm also considering getting a pleco in here eventually as the pleco can help out with the cleaning up the algae on the plants. There's algae growing on the rock over there, which I, which I think adds a nice natural look to it. There are some artificial cave rocks that I purchased, some from pet store. That orangish one over there I purchased from Etsy, handcrafted. As you can see, the Chulitochromus over here, they've taken this cave here as their own, own little uh, breeding ground. The stand that I have here for this tank is a stand that was built by myself and my cousin. So it was Pretty much a bunch of two by fours and some plywood put together, added some doors, and then painted it black. I do have a heater controller here. This heater controller will shut off the heat when it is at a certain preset, and when it gets below a certain pre preset, it turns the heater back on. So I like it because it adds a second layer of protection. I did have a video in which I talked about aquarium heater safety tips. I'll include a link for that above. Take a look at that and where I talk more about the heater shut off system and why it can be beneficial. So the reasons I went with a Lake Tanganyikan setup for this is because it was a 55 gallon and then the space I'm putting it over here, there's a little walkway over here and I didn't want to block it off with too large of a tank. And with Lake Tanganyikan cichlids, the guys you see here, they're all dwarf species. Basically, this is, the, this is as large as they're gonna get. They're all adults in here, except for that one juvenile. They're not gonna get any larger than this. So that makes for a great fish in a tank that's not very wide, but it's enough water and enough space for these guys to swim around in. So when it comes to water changes on this tank, I do do about 20 to 30% water change. These fish, in particular, these Lake Tanganyikan fish are a little more sensitive to water changes. So I try not to do large water changes. My nitrates tend to be kept in check, especially by all this plants, the algae in and around the tank. And I don't have a whole lot of fish in this tank. So 20 to 30% every two to three weeks does well. Parameters stay well, the fish are happy. So the food I feed this fish are extreme aquatic krill flakes, extreme aquatic pellets, Ron cichlid pellets, as well as some frozen foods, some frozen mysis shrimp and brine shrimp. They do pretty well with all these foods. They usually start breeding, at least the Cyprochromus and the Julitochromus start breeding when I'm feeding, feed more of the frozen foods.
can see one of the other Cipachromas, the one with the yellow tail. He was the one I bought with the original five from a local, local breeder here. And he'll be the one who will stay in this tank when I move the other purple guy down into another tank in the fish room later on. So they all eat pretty aggressively. Nobody really goes hungry, but especially with the flakes. There's plenty of flakes to go around. And as you can see, they thoroughly enjoy the flakes. I hope you enjoyed my tour of my 55 gallon Lake Tanganyikan tank. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.